This is a case-based problem from Young's double slit experiment. We know Young's double slit experiment, there are two slits, slit 1 and then slit 2. Both of them are illuminated by some light source. This is slit 1 and then slit 2. And there is a screen here and the distance between the screen and the slit is big D and the distance between the two slits is small d. So this is an experimental setup. Now let's read the first question. If the screen is moved closer to the plane of the slits S1 and S2 then the fringe width what will happen to fringe width? So we know fringe width beta equals lambda d divided by d. Now it is said that the screen is moved closer to the slits, which means the distance between the slit and the screen is actually decreasing, which means that beta is also going to decrease. Okay, but what will happen to intensity? Because all the options are, are discussing about intensity also. So as you go closer and closer, intensity will be increasing because intensity of some light, intensity of some light is going to change with the distance um, this way. Intensity is inversely proportional to R squared. So as you go away from the source, intensity is going to decrease. Now we are going closer to the source, so intensity will increase. So, which means that it will decrease, but the intensity of the bright fringe increases. So, this should be the answer. Now, let's read the second question. What will happen to the pattern on the screen when the two slits S1 and S2 are replaced by two independent but identical sources? If you are using two independent sources, okay, for example, in a, here in this slit, if you are using one bulb here and then, then another bulb here, okay, independent sources means that only like uh, two different uh, sources. But uh, if these sources will not produce uh, coherent uh, waves, so which means we cannot get the interference pattern on the screen. Let's read the third one. Two sources of light are said to be coherent when both emit light waves off. So when do we say two sources are coherent? If these two sources are coherent, we know the phase difference should not change with time. So, which means a constant phase difference. But what about, uh, so constant phase difference is there in the two options here, but there are two options. So, one is actually same wavelength and another one is different wavelength. Uh, please remember that um, the interference pattern can be seen on, uh, can be seen or produced for the monochromatic uh, light, which means they should have same wavelength. Okay, two red waves interfere or two blue waves interfere uh, and uh, uh, we can get the interference pattern. So, which means that they should have same wavelength and a constant phase difference. Then we can call those two sources as coherent sources. Next question. The fringe width in a double slit experiment is beta. If the whole setup is immersed in a liquid of refractive index mu, then the new fringe width will be, okay. For example, we do the Young's double slit experiment in air and we are um, uh, uh, doing the same in a liquid of refractive index mu. So uh, here we can uh, think of the wavelength of the light. Uh, we know beta equals lambda d by d which means uh, that beta is directly proportional to lambda. But at the same time, we know lambda is uh, 
directly proportional to velocity of the light and inversely proportional to refractive index of the medium. So if the refractive index of the medium increases, uh, definitely this um, beta is going to decrease. So how much decrease its uh, beta divided by mu? So this is the decrease in the fringe width. Next. The total path length difference between two waves meeting at points P1 and P2 on the screen are 3 lambda by 2 and 2 lambda respectively. Then we have to say about whether they are bright fringe or dark fringe. We know very well that for the bright fringe, for the bright one, the condition is path length difference. Path length difference should be n lambda and for the dark fringe it is path length difference equals n plus 1 by 2 lambda so here we have 2 lambda so which means this produces bright fringe bright fringe and here 3 lambda by 2 is uh, here if you suppose uh, substitute n is equal to 1. So 1 plus 1 by 2. This is uh, 3 lambda by 2. So this is going to be dark. So P1 is dark. And uh, P2 is bright. So bright fringe is formed at P2. Dark fringe is formed at P1. This should be the correct answer. That's all. We scored five marks. Thank you.